In a game called Azra, an undisputed man reign at the top, Scorch Earth Devildum, a quest that even a part of 40 players failed to do was completed by a lone challenger. As he pummels the monsters into oblivion, he shows others what it means to truly stand at the top of the food chain. He has over 21 castles under his care. With one step, he could flatten a castle while with another, he receives the cheers of thousands of people. This is the story of the Azra Online's rank 1 player, Siu Hyun. Despite being a king in the game and ending thousand-year-old wars by himself, he feels empty as the game is only played by a handful of people. He wonders if it is time for him to quit as well as the world was too empty. The community also went dead day by day and a time arrived when there was not a single post by the community about in-game events. The protagonist thinks that if Azra was made from the start keeping virtual reality in mind, it would have completely overtaken all the modern games with their pretty graphics. He feels that everything about the game is perfect and not even a single thing is lacking in the game but nothing will make people play this game anymore. As he lamented about all this stuff, he gets notified about Asrian Online which is a title similar to that of Azra. It is a virtual reality game with a sensory synchronization mechanism built in it that will allow its players to feel what's happening in the game with their original bodies. Azrain's trailer had over 100 million views already and featured iconic NPCs in areas from Azra. Azra is now becoming Asrian with state-of-the-art graphics, new skills, and locations. Even though it is based on Azra's world, it isn't completely Azra, but has an identity of its own. Thinking that the settings might also remain the same, Hyum decides to gather all the useful data about Azra as no one knows about it as much as he does. He vows to become number one in that game so that he can teach a lesson to the people that made fun of Azra as a failed game. Five days before Azrian got its global release, Hyun decides to spend those five days in Azra in an attempt to research hidden quests, items, and achievements. Moreover, he even checked the community boards for the players who started playing immediately when Azrian was released. On the day of release, Hyun went inside the game and used his own name as his username in the game. He goes to the initial area of the game and meets an angel NPC called Carol that appears as soon as the game starts and guides the players. When Carol changes her form, Hyun takes a look at her and confirms that she is not the angel Carol. Instead, she is the great demon Kidriel, whose identity was revealed in the last story mission of Azra. Hyun wonders why she is there while Kidriel is surprised to hear her name from his mouth. Hyun begins to feel immense pressure coming from and begins to tremble in fear inside the game. This happened because his real and virtual body is connected with sensory synchronization. Kidriel can do much about her identity being revealed, so she tells Hyun that it is his honor to meet her. She then tells him to pick a job and lead the place as soon as possible. He is presented with four items that would enable him to become a warrior, rogue, magician, or priest, depending on what he decides to pick. Hyun feels glad that he didn't have to fight her given how strong she is even though he expected to have an instant death at the start of the game. Thinking that the appearance of the great demon Kidriel is no joke and there was no such thing as a coincidence in Azra, he decides to look for a hidden event or a special reward. He thinks that he needs to fulfill some conditions in order to make the quest go forward. He notices a weirdly placed carpet and cushion in place of the sculpture that was hidden behind Kidriel when she was disguising as an angel. He moves towards it but is stopped by Kidriel. Seeing her panic, Hyun tells her that he's going to take his time doing things as there is no time limit. Hyun activates and discovers a hidden space when he steps on the carpet. He gets engulfed in a bright light and is made known that the number of jobs he can choose from has increased. According to Hyun, he expected something like this to happen as what kind of game only gives you one character a lot, but if the players discover these hidden jobs, they would be tempted to pay $110 for the extra character slot. He applauds the staff's ability to sell something. Staying the new hidden items, he wonders what might be the best job for the later stages of the game. Kidriel tells him to hurry it up as the hidden jobs he looks so badly for are right in front of him. Hyun starts walking towards Kidriel, which makes her nervous. Hyun tells her that he can feel something intense coming from behind his seat next to her. Kidriel tries to convince him to go back by saying that his feelings are a mistake, but he just ignores her and wakes past her. He finds a hidden item behind the seat and wonders what kind of job it will give. Hyun mentions that he has never seen something like this for the whole eight years he played Azra. He picks up the item in hope that it must be some good job, but little does he know. Kidriel is actually the Arctiman of Deceit who deceives humans and eats their despair. Hearing that his job is support, Hyun gets panicked. Meanwhile, Kidriel bursts into laughter thinking about how she manipulated him into picking that job. When Kidriel goes away, Hyun proceeds to the next area within the game and checks the stats of his job. He has pretty low strength, agility, and vitality while his magic power and empathy are high but these are support-oriented stats. The case is pretty much the same with his skills as well as they are support and defense-oriented too. He thinks of getting to level 50 so he can unlock his ultimate. He sees a slime monster and provokes it into fighting with him. When the monster attacks, he can blocks it with a skill that increases his defense greatly in counterattacks, but his attacks are doing little damage to the slime monster. 
He counters its attack again with a shield and attacks it non-stop, but before he could finish it, the monster is killed with a single blow from an archer. At first, Gyun thinks that he must be high level, but then he realizes that he is just a newbie archer. He struggled so much to kill just one slime monster while the others are killing it in single blows. Thinking that he can't do anything alone with these stats, he decides to partner with someone strong. Hyun wants to find a main damage dealer as a partner who has good battle sense and control and skills. Hyun remembers just the right person who perfectly fits into the criteria of a partner Hyun wants to have. That person is Ain, who is ranked second in Azra Online. Hyun logs back into Azra and arranges to meet with Ain. Hyun wonders why he had to choose a place like this as they are meeting after quite a while. As he was talking with Ain, Ain rushes towards him and attacks Hyun. Hyun successfully evades his attack and retaliates. Hyun thinks that starting a duel as soon as two people meet is disrespectful. No matter how you look at it, as one should do basic greetings first at least. After they were done fighting with each other, Hyun confirms if Ain knows about Asrian and tells him that the magician job in Asrian is particularly good. Hyun then asks if he wants to join him in Asrian. Ain gets infuriated hearing this as Hyun left him behind to join Asrian, but Hyun tells him that he didn't leave him behind, instead he went in first to see if the game is even worth playing. Hyun tells him that if they join together in Azra, they would be unstoppable like they are in Azra. Ain wonders why he has to be a mage as melee damage dealers like Berserkers suit him better. Hyun convinces him by saying that the magician job is really hard and requires a ton of control to use it to its max effectiveness. Only a god of control like Ain can use it properly. Ain blushes hearing all this and agrees to join him. As he was about to tell him about the encounter with Kidriel, Ain interrupts the conversation as he is surprised to hear about the similarities between both games. A few days later, they decide to meet in Livia located in the Magic Country, which is a place inside Azrian. Hyun puts a feather on his head so Ain can recognize him among the crowd. He hears someone calling out his name and thinks that it's the bulky guy right in front of him. He approaches and greets him but finds out that he is just a merchant NPC. Ain tells him that he is looking the wrong way. Hyun looks at Ain only to realize that she is a young girl. Hyun asks Ain about the main skill of Werewolf and is made known that it is body enhancement. Hyun is surprised to see Ain as he never imagined that she would be a girl. He confirms Ain if she chose the magician job as Hyun instructed her to. When Ain says yes, he asks her if it's a hidden or rare job and the former was the answer. She shows her stats to Hyun which surprised him as her job is a magician, but it's a close range magician. Hyun gets absolutely baffled and uneasy seeing that and wonders what even is a close range magician, but he decides to check her skills before jumping to conclusions. Hyun sees that she doesn't have any area of effect skills and only has one close range skill that consumes a lot of mana. Although its damage of 225 is quite impressive, Ain can only use it for a maximum of 45 seconds as it consumes 10 mana per second, and she only has 450 mana making Hyun think that they are screwed for sure. Ain bursts the flames from her hand and says that it doesn't hurt her at all but the flames go out after a short while. Ain wants to go hunting so she can test out her skills but Hyun declines saying that it is a level 60 area and they would get killed instantly there. Ain suggests teleporting to the next town but Hyun declines it again saying that the situation is the same there too. Ain goes angry at Hyun as he was the one that invited her to this Kansas castle in Levis but now he doesn't want to do anything. Hyun needs to check if Ain can do enough damage before going out with their current levels would be like suicide. Ain challenges Hyun to a duel which he immediately accepts as it would allow him to test for damage out. Ain wonders how he would be able to win as he is only a support, but since he can't do anything about his job, Hyun just tells her to hit him as much as she wants. When the duel starts, Ain immediately rushes toward Hyun, but he decides not to block since he needs to check how much damage she can deal. Getting hit by her directly, Hyun falls to the ground and Ain is declared the winner. Despite its level being low, the damage of her flame claws was impressive. Ain can't accept a free win like that, so she tells Hyun to give it his best otherwise, she would no longer be partners with him. When the next duel starts, Ain goes for a frontal attack again which Hyun can easily dodge as even though her movements are sharp, they are slow. Hyun dodges a bunch of her attacks and taunts her. Not taking it lightly, Ain increases her speed so much that Hyun can't dodge her attack anymore. He uses both of his defensive skills to stop her attack and defeats her successfully. Ain thinks that he is not a normal support as he has this cheat skill, but Hyun says that he already saw it once before and was confident that he could counter it. Afterward, Hyun tells Ain that he will lose to her for sure next time as her control was quite good. Later at night, they go to a castle so they can test their jobs and gain experience. Hyun and Ain arrive at the ghost fortress whose recommended level is 60. Ain asks Hyun about what to do here as even she knows that they have no chance against these skeleton mobs. Hyun tells her not to worry as he is not planning on hunting these skills well not directly at least but still, they will be able to level up. Ain finds it all confusing and tells him to explain it properly. Hyun tells Ayn that they won't be hunting these skeletons but the NPC guards at the castle will be killing the skeletons for them. 
It is a simple thought to use NPC to kill mobs, but the newer games have made it so that you don't get experience if an NPC has some involvement in the death of a mob in order to stop users from exploiting this. Players that are accustomed to the newer games have probably forgotten about this and won't be discovering it for some time, but as Azrian is based on Azra, its tactic will work for Azrian as well. Hem devises a plan and tells Ain to approach the commander skeleton of the whole mob group as if the commander gets a groad, all the mobs under his command will get a groad as well. Hem warns her that she will be getting a fierce status effect because of the huge level gap so she won't be able to move her body for a little while when he aggroes him due to the sensory synchronization. Ain aggroes all the mobs and gets stuck in her place for a short while but manages to pull it out of it. She runs towards Hyun who suggests splitting the mob forces into 50-50. He grows some of the mobs by deflecting their arrows and stunning them in order to not get overwhelmed by the whole army. When they got near the castle, the NPC guards noticed the ghost commander and his undead army. The castle guards order for bombardment and conjure a huge magic circle to blast all of the skeletons. The blast was so huge that Ain and Hinon almost got caught in it, but they managed to escape just in the nick of time. Kem expected the guard to just fire a bunch of arrows, but they just cast a huge and violent area of effect spell. Both Hyun and Ain got a bunch of experience and leveled up quite a lot. Even Hyun didn't think that they would get so much experience. Hyun mentions that the game's eye calculates everything like damage, healing, and crowd control to properly distribute experience amongst party members. The counter was a close call nonetheless, and they almost failed. But since they leveled up, it should be safer now as their status effects will be weaker since they leveled up. Hyun uses his laptop in order to find some posts that will help him with the game. He sees an interesting post that explains how the crits work in this game. A crit will always occur in the game when the vitals are hit like in the case of a human, their vital areas will be the head, heart, joints, and so on. Hyun thinks that it might be possible for Ain to crit every attack as she is skilled in close-range melee combat. While waiting in the game for Ain, Kim mentions that she logs on around 5 p.m. and logs out around 3. A person has to be an addict to be spending so much time at game, but Kyun isn't in much of a position to say anything as he skips his classes right after taking attendance in order to play the game. Ain comes into the game and asks if they are going to hunt ghosts' skeletons again. Ain applauds Hun for finding this farming method as no one else could have thought about it so quickly. She hit level 40 in just three days while Hyun reached level 42. Ken is thinking of hunting named monsters instead of the ghost skeletons today. These monsters are stronger than usual and give huge rewards. He mentions that a lot of guiles will be preparing for named monster raids and will start doing it in about two weeks. Hyun wants to kill these named monsters first in order to get the first kill award. Since it is impossible for them to kill every named monster first, they will only be focusing their attention on special named monsters that give stat bonuses and rewards. Aang gets fired and up hearing all this and wants to go immediately, but Hyun stops her as they haven't decided on which named monsters to attempt. He asks Aang if she has spent her stat points yet. She checks and finds out that she has 70 points available. Since you get 2 points per level, she should have 78 points. Ain says that she put the 8 points in strength. Even though she is a magician, she put 8 points in strength out of habit as she played as a werewolf in Azra. Although he is annoyed by it, Hyun helps her to distribute the rest of her points properly. Hyun mentions that Ain has low health because of being a magician despite being a close combat fighter, but it isn't much of a problem as he can cover this up with his defensive skills. Hyun thinks that she can do enough damage as of now, so he plans to save their skills points for now. Given how strong they are now, they should be able to kill a level 50 named Monster Boss in 5 minutes with their current build. Meanwhile, two brothers, Heldus and Arning are shown who make good money from the game despite playing it for only less than a month. Arning mentions that more than 10 million people are playing this game right now. Heldus feels glad they started playing this game full time as they are making a good amount of money. They think of places where they can invest the money they are earning now. As they were talking, another boy comes and asks if they are heading to the guild meeting because they are going to discuss about a special monster raid there. At the Keegan Guild House, the head of the guild mentions that one of their members discovered a hidden named Boss Leopard that awaits them in a blue shrine that sits in a clearing inside the dark forest. He mentions that all guild activities will be paused now for some time and all of their efforts will go on defeating this hidden named boss. At the same time, Hyun tells Ain that after hunting all the named monsters on their list, they will be heading to the final spot which is the same blue shrine in the dark forest. The Gigan Guild is on its way to battle the named monster of the blue shrine. On the way, Arning asks Held Dust about his views of this expedition. Held Dust says that first expeditions usually just focus on analyzing the attack patterns of the named monsters, but succeeding on the first try is a possibility too. They also ask the little boy Terra Terra about his view, but he is at a loss for words due to his lack of confidence and just agrees with what Arning said. Arning and Held Dust try to cheer him up by saying that he should be proud of getting in the guild and getting in this expedition as it only took people that had a certain power level and he met that demand. They get inside the shrine and are immediately slowed down due to the cold. 
Before long, the forgotten magician Leopard appears in front of the guild. Seeing him, some of the members froze in their position due to fear, but the leader instructs them to get into a battle formation and tells everyone that he is an ice-type magician. He tells the vanguards to pull aggro, whilst keeping in mind his powerful magic. As Arning approaches the monster, he gets one shot by Leopard, who lets out an ice attack straight to his heart. Leopard says that it is only the beginning and begins to channel more of his attack. The leader instructs the tanks to guard the damage dealers at all costs, as if they lose any more of them, they won't have any chance but Leopard killing them like they are flies. The leader instructs the others to not group up as Leopard is using piercing magic. As time went by, only the leader stood tall while the rest of his group lay dead on the ground, but Yumi finally found himself helpless in front of Leopard. Terra Terra, who is hiding in a corner, thinks about what to do as even if he survived by hiding, he would be kicked out of the guild for being a burden. He makes up his mind and plans to attack Leopard, but stops when he sees Hyun and Ain entering the shrine. Hyun and Ain enter the blue shrine and wonder why the boss is out. They ask themselves if someone has attempted to defeat the boss already, or if he is already defeated. Hyun doubts that someone defeated Leopard, as he is a level 95 main boss, and not even thousands of level 30s players can defeat it. Before they approach the boss, Hyun tells Ain to get close and shares a plan with her. Leopard thinks that some small fry are still around and launches an attack on them. He attacks Ain, but she deflects his attack. Leopard gets surprised seeing this and attacks them again, but the result was just the same this time. Hyun mentions that it is impossible to completely block Leopard attack with one second immortality as he is a level 95 named monster. One second immortality was called the Heavenly God's Protection before and it was the spell that Hyun uses to deflect stop and deflect attacks with. Hyun mentions that the only way to stop his attacks is to deflect it at an angle. Hyun says that if Leopard's spells don't hit directly, its damage is low enough to be blocked with one second immortality, but it requires a really good reaction time so he came up with this plan knowing how good Ain's reflexes are. He also instructs her to aim for critical hits. As his attention was focused on Hyun, Ain quickly moves in and attacks him. Leopard lets out a counter-attack, but Hyun jumps and stops the attack using one second immortality and stuns him with the shield. As he was stunned, Ain jumped back in quickly and landed a couple of crit hits on him. Hyun tells Ain to leave the supporting on him and focus on the monster. After some time, Leopard begins to prepare his final move as he was almost dead. Leopard launches an attack on both of them, but they block it. Ain rushes towards Leopard again, but he lets out another attack. Hyun blocks the attack again using his one second immortality and paves the way for Ain to hit Leopard. Ain successfully hits Leopard and both of them defeat the forgotten magician Leopard. Teratara looks in awe at seeing those two defeating the monster alone while his whole guild failed to land a hit on him. He thinks of uploading their video to YouTube. Including Leopard, Ain and Hyun have defeated 18 named monsters and got 20,000 gold, nice rare items and one unique item for it. He gives the unique staff to Ain as a unique item is worth 10 times more than a rare one, so he thinks that if takes the rest of it, it should be even. Since a staff is useless for Ain, Hyun suggests her to use the staff for enchanting. Although she objects a little for receiving only one item, she eventually agrees with the distribution. Afterward, they go to the Magic Country's largest city, Lupra, to meet the enchanter. Ain thinks that this city must have caused the game developers a run for their money as the city is really detailed. They try to go inside the city, but are stopped by guards who think that they are dark priests. Dark priests use the power of darkness and are treated poorly by NPCs since their class was created by heretics. They face a lot of restrictions on traveling in important facilities. Hem tells the guards that their clothes are just some equipment that they looted, and they are not in fact dark priests. Hearing this, the guards let them go inside but warn them to not create any trouble. When they go inside, they are looked down on by people who think that they are dark priests. They make their way to the enchanter's shop and ask if there is a changing room as they need to change the equipment that they plan to enchant. The enchanter uses her spell and teleports the both of them to the changing room. Hem changes his clothes and tells Ain to come out when she is done. He gives his rare bread plate to the enchanter, who mentions that the enchanting price will be 2,000 gold up front, even if the enchant fails. Enchanter begins to enchant the item, but fails to do so. Hyun didn't expect to succeed right away as the chance for a successful enchantment is only 45%, although he expects that some of his items will succeed since it's almost a 50 to 50 ratio. He gives out a couple of more items, but they fail to enchant too. Hyun is baffled by this and thinks that it's a scam. Meanwhile, Ain comes back and successfully enchants her item on the first try. Hyun gets disheartened seeing this as he failed all of his enchantments. Ain then gives the enchanter a robe and gives it to Hyun later after it got enchanted successfully. Hyun thinks that supporting Ain was well worth it. Meanwhile, Terra Terra is kicked from the guild for uploading the video of Hyun and Ain on YouTube. His leader kicked him because the guild struggled so hard to just find the location of Lippard, but he just released all the info to the public. Terra Terra is sitting all sad, but held dust and Arning approach him and try to cheer him up. 
They tell him that they also left the guild as getting restricted by rules isn't their cup of tea. Moreover, they didn't want to play with a guild master that yells at a 16-year-old. After cheering him up, they tell Terra Terra to remove the video nonetheless as he shouldn't upload the video of other people without their consent as it can result in the video getting copyrighted. Terra Terra was surprised to hear this as they thought that they were NPCs. Hell Dust and Arning thought the same too, but they changed their view when they analyzed the fight closely. Meanwhile, Hyun and Ain are battling more enemies to increase their level. Hyun is surprised by Ain that she is a glass cannon meaning that although she is really strong, she doesn't have the health and survivability to support it, but Ain dodges every attack with her mechanics and reaction time. Before long, they reach level 50 and can now attempt their awakening quest to unlock their ultimate skills. These ultimate skills are way more powerful than normal skills and can turn the tide of battle in no time. Hyun checks the quest only to realize that he can't attempt this quest alone as supports only shine when they play with other players. Later, an explanation of how the awakening quest works is revealed. The ultimate or awakening skill you will get in this quest depends on the decisions someone makes while doing the quests and how well someone clears the quest. Ain and Hyun initiate the quest with each other and enter a space within the subconscious. They get time and passion keywords from the subconsciousness respectively. The deeper they go into the subconscious, the more powerful skill they will receive. However, the difficulty also greatly increases depending on how deep they will go. All of their stats are temporarily gone back to 10 while they get the ability to turn back time once. Moreover, all of their skill points have been temporarily removed too. They already feel sluggish due to the loss in stats. They arrive at the first level of the Awakened Quest and see their clones on the other side of the level. Hyun wonders if they are created from the data of his and Ain's playtime together. Hyun thinks that a human's level of control will always be superior to that of an Ai. The clone Ain attacks Hyun, but he dodges it rather easily. Its stats are the same as the real Ain, but its level of control is nowhere near to the original Ain plus her movements are predictable too. They clear the first Abyss level rather easily and get 20 temporary points in each of their stats. They go down again to the second Abyss level and see their clone again, but this time they resemble a bit more of their original self. The second Abyss level was a walk in the park for Hyun and Ain again, even though it was a bit more challenging than the first one. This time they get 40 temporary stat points and 20 temporary skills points. They use the points quickly before they are sent to the third abyss level. They see their clones again with highly increased stats and a mysterious skill. The clone Ain immediately rushes toward Hyun and attacks her. Hyun thinks that she resembles the movements of Ain a lot more now, but it is still an eye. Little by little, he injures the clone Ain until she is just one hit away from dying. As she approaches Hyun again, he tells himself to not make any mistakes and uses his one second immortality skill, but he receives damage nonetheless. As the damage was more than 33% of his total ep, he lost an arm. The mysterious skill of the clone Ain is revealed now. It doubles every kind of damage when the ep is below 10%. Hyun thinks that even if he clears this floor, he will get stuck in the second one for sure. Meanwhile, the clone Hyun successfully defeats Ain with the help of the skill called Vision Sword, which makes a sword whose power is determined by how much damage he absorbs. Hyun sees the Vision Sword skill and gets happy knowing that his job has an attack skill plus the skill is spammable as it can be used over and over again. Hyun clears the third stage by himself and gets 80 temporary stat points and 50 temporary skill points. Hyun and Ain receive their first awakening skills. The game finally gives him some rest time so he can have some much earned rest. The awakening skills from now are given for every floor they clear. Hyun remembers that in Azra, the difficulty greatly increased after the fourth floor, so most users would never go in there and would leave after the third floor, but the later floors have a lot better awakening skills. He dumps all his points in his Heavenly God's protection skill and makes it reach level 8, so he can now use the Vision Sword. He also changes the skill name to One Second Absorption. As he was doing it, Ain comes back to her in ghost form and talks to him, but Hyun cannot see her. He tells Ain to wait a bit as he will use the time reversal in some time. He goes to the fourth floor as he now has a chance to clear it by himself using the Vision Sword. The clones this time are several times stronger than the last floor and have two hidden skills. The clone Ain rushes toward Hyun, but Hyun goes towards her instead of dodging as the skill of clone Ain does more damage if it hits in its increased range. Hyun uses one second absorption and hits the clone Ain with the Vision Sword that was created. His damage was enough to kill her, but some of it was absorbed by the one-second immortality skill of the clone Hyun. The clones attack Hyun like a team and give him no breathing room. He is hit by a long-range spell from the clone Hyun. Ain suggests him to reverse time as nothing can be done anymore, but Hyun refuses to do so as he still can do one more thing. He receives the clone Ain attack on purpose and gets his AP to drop less than 20%, so he can get the Blood Fairy's cape effect from his cape. This effect increases his speed by 50% for the net 60 seconds. He almost kills the clone Hyun, 
but he activates his awakening skill, which reduces the damage he receives by 95% percent for 5 minutes, but as a cooldown of 24 hours. He deflects both of the clone's attacks simultaneously, which makes a really powerful vision sword that he uses to defeat the clone Ain. As all the hidden skills are revealed, it is only a matter of time before the ultimate skill of the clone Hyun expires and he finishes the job. Once the 5 minutes are over, he defeats the clone Hyun and clears the 4th level. He gets 250 and 150 temporary stat and skill points whilst also unlocking new awakening skills. Before turning back time, Hyun thinks of doing some reconnaissance as they unlocked a new level. He goes to the 5th level and gets surprised by how strong the clones are. He even thinks that this aim might be a named boss. He wonders if the difficulty was always this high as he reached the 5th floor in Azra 2, but it wasn't this hard. Maybe the developers just implemented a new balance batch. As he was talking to himself, the clone Ain immediately gets in his face. Ain screams at Hyun to get back to his senses and reverse the time. Hyun barely manages to reverse back time before he was killed. They return back to the starting point and Ain asks Hyun what he would have done if she didn't warn him. The duo managed to make it to the 5th floor nonetheless, but the difficulty was too high compared to the 4th floor. Hyun tells Ain that he is going to go get some water and goes into rest mode. While drinking water, he thinks that most people would have given up at this time, but he won't as can afford to miss this second chance that is given to him, plus his pride as the top-ranked player of Azra is on the line as well. He goes back in Azrian, and they start going through the first four levels in order to reach the fifth one. Hyun has made some plans to clear the stage and thinks that they have the advantage now in this stage. The Vision Sword damage is based upon how much damage one second absorption can handle with him taking damage himself. Naturally, the ability is better against multi-hit attacks rather than a single strong attack. So to capitalize on this, he made Ain learn a wind-type skill and temporarily enabled friendly fire. By absorbing all the multi-hits of her wind skill, Hyun can make a really strong vision sword. He gets close to the clones in order to use all the time of the vision sword effectively, and begins slashing his copy while Ain distracted her copy and used his wind barrier at the same time. As Hyun was about to hit his clone, the clone used his ultimate to become a copy of her clone Ain partner, so now there are two clone Ains on the battlefield for some time. Hyun gets sandwiched between the attacks of both clones, but he is saved at the last moment by Ain. Ten minutes have passed since the duo entered the fifth stage. Hyun is severely damaged and is under 20% happy, causing the Blood Fairy's cape effect to be activated. He thinks that if this fight was made into a movie, it would be a huge success. Landing strikes on the enemy clones is a task in itself, and whenever he gets attacked by one clone, the other comes from his blind spot. Although he is being saved by Ain's wind barrier, that too is reaching its limit. He wonders if there is any way to defeat these clones. As he was thinking of a way, one of the clone Ains started to use her ultimate skill called Vestige Explosion which gathers the remnants of mana that was used around the place and shoots it forward. The size of this beam depends on the amount of mana absorbed. Hyun dodges the first ultimate, but it was so strong that the game floor was destroyed at the points where the ultimate skill went from. Now the second clone Ain channels her ultimate skill, but this time, is way stronger than the last one as it also gathered the mana from the last ultimate. As he can no longer defend himself against the skill, he tries to change its attack direction by throwing a dagger at the clone Ain's foot. This caused the skill to point at the stage's surface. It was so strong that it blew a big hole in the surface causing the energy of the abyss to leak. The Ain that just used her ultimate skill died by dropping in the hole. It got lucky with one clone that Hyun doesn't have his dagger with him anymore while the Blood Fairy's cape effect is also deactivated. Accepting his limit, he uses his last plan as all of his other plans failed. He grabs on the clone Ain and tells the real Ain to push him and the clone Ain into the abyss. The Azrian monitoring center applauded in awe of the duo as they cleared the fifth stage while some of them almost refused to believe that they managed to complete the fifth floor. Mary questions Kang's remarks in which he says that the duo will never be able to complete the fifth floor. Kang answers that he never considered that the participants could use the map breaking to their advantage. One of the workers named Robert questions if the vision sword is too broken, but another worker named Mori says that it has too many restrictions placed on it to be called broken. As they were quarreling with each other, Fred tells everyone to calm down as Azrian can no longer be touched as it is already a complete game and only one person has the authority to change Azrian. Due to the stage being broken, Hyun and Ain were given the awakening skills automatically. Ain cries saying that she wanted to pick the skill according to her choice. They decide on checking the skills and felt relieved when they read about it. Sometime later, Hyun goes to a class reunion where everybody is talking about Asrian. He meets with a fellow class fellow named King who asks him if he is playing Asrian. Hyun wonders why is he talking with him as they never talked in high school. Knowing that Hyun has played Azra online for a couple of years, Kim asks him if he is interested in becoming a professional gamer. Kim asks Hyun if he has ever heard of an esports team named Stardust. 
That team is looking for players who have experience in playing Azra online as the knowledge from that game is extremely useful for Azrian, but they are having a lot of trouble finding the right people. Hyun thinks that it is only natural that they can't find good people from that game as it was a shitty game and it had at most only 300 players online at a given time. Kim tells Hyun that someone of his caliber would be happily accepted into the team but Hyun denies it and says that he will think about it later. Since Kim treated him with a nice meal, Hyun tells him about a hidden quest from Azrian. Sometime later in the game, Hyun thinks that although playing for a professional esports team and becoming a professional gamer has its advantages, he still prefers to play without being tied by an organization. Since Kim was really happy when he heard about the hidden quest, Hyun thinks that it will be fine to meet him from time to time. Hyun thinks that he needs to test out his ultimate skill, so he rents out a dummy and takes it into the wilderness. He uses his skill to transfer his soul within the dummy. According to the description of his ultimate, the body in which he assimilates his soul to will have enhanced stats and their skill levels will be increased one. Moreover, he can use his own skills too while being in another body. He easily defeats all the targets while being inside that dummy. He also learned a really good normal skill called Powerless Wave which surrounds him with a 2 meters wave that reduces the defense on any opponent that touches it based on his empathy. While being inside the dummy, Hyun also managed to defeat a level 70 field boss called King Lasher. Sometime later, Ain and Hyun go to some ancient ruins in Califer Mountain. Ain wonders if they can defeat a level 150 ice golem. Hyun says that a while ago maybe it couldn't but now they have their ultimates. He uses his ultimate to transfer his soul into Ain, which greatly raised her stats and also her skill level by one. Hyun feels a little awkward about transferring his soul inside her body, but it is only natural that he feels like that. It feels a little off for them as their consciousnesses are overlapping with each other. Hyun takes control of the body and tells Ain to see how he will synergize the skills of both of them. Ain thinks that watching Hyun fighting with her body will give her crucial insight into his combat style and mechanics. Doing so might allow her to see why Hyun is so much better than her as she's only good at 1 vs 1 while Hyun excels in multiple situations. They do a crazy amount of damage to that golem. Hyun says that they can only do this damage around level 250, but they are doing it in their level 50s only. It is so strong that Hyun thinks of it as broken. Ain says that she didn't have time to learn anything as it went by too fast. After they defeat the ice golem, a suspicious old man arrives and gives them a hidden quest. When they accept the quest, the old man reveals that the question isn't difficult at all as all they have to do is to defend the entrance to this ruin for one hour a day. They need to stop or kill anyone who tries to enter the ruins and they must also not enter it themselves. On day one, a strange beam of light starts to appear from the ruins when their time to defend it arrives. The first day goes by without anyone trying to infiltrate the ruins. They get two skills points as a reward for completing the first day. On the second day, some people arrive to infiltrate the ruins. Seeing this, Hyun tells Ain to prepare herself. The people that try to infiltrate the ruins are given a different quest, which is opposite to that of Ain and Hyun as they have to defend it while the other have to infiltrate it. When a group arrives near the ruin on the second day, Ain defeats them easily and kills them. One of the people who saw her in the shrine video never noticed that Ain smiles while she kills people. She is so strong that they think that she is an NPC. Little do they know that Hyun and Ain are fighting a single body using Hyun's ultimate. When the second day is over, the old man meets them and gives them a weak heaven's elixir that amplifies the HP and mana of whoever drinks it. Hyun mentions that getting one of these elixirs was even hard in Azra. He gives the elixir to Ain as he has assimilation while she fights in the front. Afterward, in the real world, Kim thanks Hyun for telling him about the quest, and he went up 10 levels in just a day. He tries to pay him back by showing him a screenshot of a quest that tells the players to investigate the suspicious pillar of light that appears in the ruins. As this quest's objective intervenes with their objective, Hyun tells him to not do this quest as they won't be able to do it anyways. Kim asks about the reason why Hyun doesn't want him to do this quest. Hyun thinks that it would be bothersome to do this quest against him but of course, he can't tell him that. He tells him that the risk of the quest is too high and in two days he will discover why so he has to trust him for now. Kim understands him and says that he will try to convince his gaming team too. Hyun didn't think that he would manage to convince his time but Kim succeeded in doing so. The third day went by with no infiltrator too. This time, Hyun gets a unique sword as a reward. Afterward, the quest where people are told to investigate the Pillar of Light is upgraded. Its rewards are greatly increased, and it's the first time that skill points are being given in Asrian. Moreover, a minimum level 50 restriction has also been placed after the quest rewards were updated. As the rewards are just too high to ignore, Korea's third strongest guild called Myth is also participating in it, while foreign guilds like Darkness are also participating. Darkness is the current strongest guild in the game with some really highly ranked players in their team. On the fourth and last day, the whole event is being live streamed for the users. Hyun uses her ultimate and sends his soul inside Aim before the fighting starts. 
On the live show, a commentator asks another commentator from Stardust if they are going to participate in the Count's quest. The guys say that they were originally planning to participate but cancelled it when Kim convinced them by saying that it's too dangerous and they should wait two days. As the rewards are huge, the risk they will take will also be great, so they ultimately decided to not participate. As they were talking, the Myth Guild approached the ruins with their main DPS and Vice Guild Master up in the front. Meanwhile, Darkness is waiting to check out what the other guilds are doing first. The Vice Guild Master walks up to Ain and asks if she is also here to beat the quest. As the Vice Master was telling Ain how dangerous it is to come here alone, Ain just attacks and defeats him with one blow. Seeing their Vice Master die, the rest of the guild rush towards Ain, but Ain is just defeating them with ease, while him is hanging in the back to help in case she needs it. She is so tough that people think that she is a humanoid monster. Aang gets bored seeing how weak they are and kills the guild master. Meanwhile, the Stardust commentator feels relieved that they didn't participate in the quest. In a one against many situation, Aang created chaos so she could better control the flow of battle. The commentator thinks that she is a very advanced AI. Seeing what happened to Myth, Korea's top guild, Warren gave up on the quest. Darkness Guild Master XL wonders if she is the same girl from the Shrine video. The video description of Hyun and Ain fighting in the Blue Shrine becomes famous. Reina, the Vice Guild Master, asks XL if they have a chance at this. XL says that they have a 50% chance of winning this fight even. Reina gets scared hearing this as all the main members of the guild are here but they still have a 50% chance to win. Only 40 minutes remain of the total hour in which Ain and Hyun have to defend the ruins. Ain hopes that the next guys will be stronger. Hyun says that the opponents that are coming this time are different as they are serious and controlled, unlike the Korean guilds. The Darkness Guild has all their buffs to a vanguard called Piaz who is ninth in the world ranking. Piaz immediately charges towards Ain, thinking that without all these buffs, she could never match his speed, but to his surprise, Ain successfully gets close to her and cancels her skill. Piaz gets scared thinking that her agility might still be higher than his despite all the buffs given to him. Hyun tells Ain to do whatever she wants, but he will intervene and help if things get dangerous. When the fight begins again, Aang gets distracted by magic coming from the ground which gave Piaz a chance to strike at her, but Hyun intervenes and blocks it using his shield whilst also applying a faint status on him. Aang quickly approaches Piaz and gets rid of him. Now the Darkness Guild is sending a tanker with all those buffs applied again. As she doesn't have enough mana, Aang drinks the weak heaven's elixir. Aang uses her ultimate against the number 7th in the world ranking and kills him with one attack. XL is surprised seeing this as he didn't expect her to still have this much mana on her. The commentators are completely awestruck seeing the famous tanker, Bear Shield, getting obliterated with a single blow. After defeating the Bear Shield, Ain approached the Darkness Guild members while being covered in flames. The commentators mentioned that the boss had a hidden card like a real player saves their ultimate till the end. XL commands his guild to stay in formation. After everything failed, the second ranked player in the world, Mayday decides to battle Ain now. She wants the area of effect damage dealers to distract the boss while she prepares herself. Hyun tells Ain to switch the control of the body with him now as the enemies have started to aim at their blind spots. Mayday is completely baffled seeing Ain dodge all the attacks even though they clearly attack from a blind spot. Ain locates where the attack came from and immediately gets close to Mayday who panics thinking that locating her with the angel of the attack should be impossible. After Mayday was defeated, XL accepts his defeat and retreats. Hyun takes control from Ain again as this quest has a separate clear condition. He goes to the old man inside the ruins and makes him flee the area. They discover a fragment of the heavens in the Pillar of Light. The strength of the heavens entered their bodies and they were both given the title of heavenly beings. This title gave them 50% resistance to cold and lightning and they won't feel cold anymore. Moreover, something special might also happen to them. An ex Azra player sees Ain's fight at the ruins and feels that she has seen that movement somewhere else before. He suddenly remembers that Ain and Azrae used to fight like this and gets surprised knowing that Ain is actually a girl. Meanwhile, the Darkness leader XL is notified that he has cleared the quest somehow. Steel Rock tells about the identity of Ain to another ex Azrae player called Berard, but he already knew about this as he has fought her in PvP a lot and remembers her style clearly even though he always lost to her. Steel Rock is still surprised thinking that Ain is a girl as he always thought that she would look like a berserker. Unlike him, Bayard isn't surprised by this as it is perfectly possible that she modified her character in the game. Bayard thinks that all the ex Azra players are growing at an incredible place, and that doesn't include Anne only as he knows some other strong ex Azra players as well that are quite ahead in Azrian. Thinking how strong Anne is already, Bayard wonders how strong Hyun is at the moment as he was the top one in Azra by a considerable margin. Plus, if Anne is still hanging around Hyun like she used to in Azra, then they would basically be unbeatable. 
However, Steele and Berard feel relieved that they aren't playing together as Ain was only in the video, but little do they know Hyun's soul was inside Ain's body throughout the whole video of her fight at the ancient ruins. They go hunting afterward as they can't afford to be left behind. Kim is talking about Ain with his guild leader. The guild leader thinks that the way she blocked those attacks from her blind spot flawlessly, it's almost like those movements are done by two brains. So according to him, only an eye can move like that, but Kim thinks that it is different as the way she approached and took advantage of the opponent's psychology by getting in their face seems like a human's attitude. Kim tries to analyze her fight as he has a trainee evaluation in three days that he hasn't worked for at all, but if he manages to understand how Ain is fighting, he can pass it. Meanwhile, in the Darkness Guild, XL tells everyone that the girl that defeated them was not an NPC, rather she is a real human. He identified it when he saw that the contribution rate in the system log was off as even after everything added up it didn't even reach 10% and only user actions are considered in the calculations of the contribution rate. He tells everyone that the boss they faced was a girl who had a completely different quest from the rest of them, but he thinks that she probably got some buff from the quest and her job isn't Dark Priest, instead, it's a hidden job. Rana thinks that if she is in fact a person, they should make her join their guild. XL completely agrees with her as he wanted to say this too. Reyna wants to hurry up before the other guilds notice that she is a human too. Meanwhile, Hyun is eating noodles while using his laptop. He sees that the internet is full of threads about Ain. He feels relieved as he doesn't want to be a center of attention anyways. He also sees an official Azrian post that says that in four days, the official story of Azrian begins and a dual arena is also being added today in all cities. All the arenas are connected virtually so people can meet users from other countries as well. Hyun thinks that Ain will be delighted to hear this news. He feels that you will probably be busy after the patch releases. As he was thinking about going on a hunt before the match, he sees a message from Ain that says that she won't be able to log into the game for two days. He decides to check out a new quest that he received when he reached level 50. He goes to the Temple of Twilight, which is the quest's area, and wonders if there was a place like this in Azra as well. He gets welcomed by a priestess, but Hyun is suspicious of her. As what kind of priestess wears clothes like that? The priestess takes Hyun inside the temple. Hyun asks her if she holds a high place at this temple as her attire seems different from the other, but the priestess says that she just modified according to her style. Hyun is constantly feeling something strange from this team and thinks that something feels off about it. The priestess of Twilight called Rushia inspects Hyun's soul as he is awakened and promises to not reveal his information to other players. Rushia realizes that Hyun has a hidden job which is support. She tells Hyun that she has never seen something like that class before as it is pretty unique. When Hyun tries to leave the temple, Rusha stops her and asks if he knows what his empathy stat is. Hyun tells her that it is just a special stat for support, but Rusha says that to truly understand it, they need to go back to the Transcendents. Transcendents are beings that exist in a higher plane than humans and are often known as angels or demons. She tells him that empathy is closely related to the Transcendents as they need to receive empathy from the prayers of mortals so they can bestow boons or prophecies that affect the world. That's the reason priests and priestesses learn this way of prayer. She asks him if he wants to learn how to pray. Hyun agrees to give a try. Rusha tells him that the prayers of those with high empathy can reach transcendence more easily, but it is set for humans at birth, and they need to do so much work to raise it. Hyun can raise it as a stat, which is no short of a blessing. Kak will have the potential to call upon angels and demons in the future with these prayers. She tells him about the story of a priest that fell sleeping during prayer and claimed to be transported to a strange place inside his dream. Rusha takes him to that place as well where the sky is red and the sun is black. She further tells him that the secret of that priest was that he prayed to a demon instead of a demon. And since there is a place close to angels, there must also be a place close to demons. The real mayor in contrast reality and is closer to hell instead of heaven, so the prayers here reach the demons instead. Rusha takes Hyun back when he requests it. Hyun feels motivated now to pray as he saw an unexplored realm. She tells him that in order to pray, he needs to empty his mind and to not lose himself to subconscious thoughts. It is difficult for him to pray, but he keeps trying nonetheless. He asks the priestess about her identity and wonders if she is a demon worshipper. Rusha just says that she is a normal priest and goes away. He continues to pray and reaches level 2 on it after praying a lot. He empathizes with a nearby transcendent because of his prayers. He walks around the temple with no goal and comes across a room that had a little girl trapped in it with chains. Hyun wonders why a little girl is chained in a place like this. He sees some priests enter the room and instantly hides outside. He sees the priests use some mind control skill on the kid who even has a magic circle underneath her. Hyun thinks that even if it is a game, this kind of scene is too much to bear. When the priests go away, he tries to wake up the kid, but she just doesn't respond. He makes her drink an elixir which allowed her to come back to her senses. The girl thanks Hyun for rescuing her and asks if she could buy something to eat from him. Hyun only has a piece of bread. 
The girl asks how much is it and Hyun says that 10 gold but the girl doesn't have any money in hand. Hyun asks her if she wants to trade it for the necklace she is wearing but when she denies it, he just gives the bread to her saying that she can give him the money sometime later. The girl tells Hyun that her name is Laos when he asked about it. As he was thinking, he receives a main quest to help the girl but there is no reward for it. Hyun asks Elise if she wants to leave this place and of course she says yes. Hyun thinks that her situation and way of speaking is strange. Hyun says that he would be willing to help her even if it wasn't a quest. He carries her outside and hears a voice behind his head. He looks back but doesn't see anyone. He asks Elise if she can run fast. Louise replies that she uses wind magic so she is decently fast. When they run, Hyun is surprised to see that she is able to keep up with him. Hyun is worried that despite running fast for 10 minutes, they haven't gotten far away from the temple. He tells Louise to stop as he thinks that they have been running in circles like the whole road is endless. Suddenly a light appeared from the temple and a road appeared right next to them. As they run through the mysterious road they found, Hyun asks Louise if she has a destination on her mind. Although she doesn't have one, she mentions that the Lekatra castle is the closest town from their current position, so they decide to go there first. As they were running, they get attacked by assassins, whose level is 200 or above. He barely manages to save Louise from an attack by using his one second absorption. He mentions that their attack was faster than that of the name boss Lippard. Since Hyun can't win against the two of them solo, he blocks their field of view using his vision sword and escapes with Louise. The assassins catch up to them soon, so Hyun is forced to defend against them, which is decreasing their speed. He asks Elise to lend him her soul as if it goes on like this, they can die. Hearing this, Elise agrees to give her soul to him. Hyun uses assimilation on Louise and controls her body. Although she doesn't have an attack skill, she has other good skills. If they went separately, Hyun would have to worry about Louise, but now he no longer has to worry about that. Hyun thinks that he needs to shake the assassins off before Louise's magic power plummets. Seeing the assassins slow down, Hyun gets back to his original body and defeats one of the assassins using his one-time absorption and shield. The other assassin uses flare but stops going after them. Seeing the flare, Hyun wonders if there are more people following them. While they rest for a minute, Louise tells Hyun that if they go to Lekatra Castle, the sun mustn't touch her, as there's a special tracking magic placed on her. The magic makes her power shine when she is touched by the sun. She tells Hyun to find a place where the sunlight won't touch her. She tells Louise to get up so they can get going. Louise gets surprised as they just started to rest a bit after running for so long. Hyun says that if what she said is true, then they need to go to a place other than Lekatra Castle. The magic place on Louise is called the Stigma of Light that only angels or few heavenly beings have access to. Hyun wonders why they would use such a spell on a child like Louise. Since she must avoid the sunlight at all costs, Hyun takes her to a place that isn't touched by the sun at all. They go to a dungeon as it is the best place to escape the sun. Even though she was extremely scared of going into the dungeon, she agrees to go there nonetheless as she already entrusted her soul to Hyun, so she would rather follow him to the very end. Hyun took her quite deep inside the dungeon and she fell asleep immediately because she was probably feeling tired after all that running. While they were escaping, the details of the quest changed. Hyun now has to take her to the nearest town or city. There is no reward this time too. Hyun wonders why he is doing a quest like this when there is a huge patch that is about to take place. Hyun goes into rest mode to take a break from the game. Meanwhile, the developer in charge, Quan, says that they won't be able to release a patch as the flow of Azrain's main story is changing due to some unforeseen event. He wonders why all the variables like people, atmosphere, religion, economy, history, and language are fluctuating when they were this close to releasing the patch. As he was thinking, his assistant arrives and tells him that all this is happening because of the interference of a single user. Quan thinks that the assistant is showing Louise as a player, but the assistant says that the guy assimilating into her is the player. Seeing the gameplay footage, he understands why the workers are so interested in checking the players out. Quan realizes that all the fluctuation is being caused by that one quest, and since they can do nothing about it, they will just do the patch after the quest ends. The assistant tells him that they should move the release as they have already informed the users and finished the contract with the service provider, but Quan isn't listening to anything and only wants the patch to be released when the quest ends. When Hyun came back into the game, he saw Louise crying as she thought that Hyun had abandoned her. It's already time for his class, but he decides to leave it as he can't leave Louise like that even though she is an NPC. Louise wants to go out of the dungeon, but Hyun is pretty sure that the assassins are still after them as they are probably capable enough to track them without the sun. By now, those assassins should be near the entrance of the dungeon. He tells Elise to not worry as there is no one that knows this place better than him. Hyun asks Elise if she always speaks like that. Louise wonders what is wrong with her manner of speech. Hyun just thinks that it's weird, but Louise says that it is her habit since she was a kid. He takes Elise to a really big jump, making Louise question Hyun if they can even make this jump. Hyun mentions that they will make the jump with the help of centrifugal force as this is a cylindrical cave. Hyun takes control of her body and successfully makes the jump. 
When they reach there, Hyeon sees a nicely built door and opens it to see something interesting inside. Louise gets inside the door and wonders what it is as she has never seen a place full of things like this one. Hyeon is glad that the place is exactly the same as it was in Azra. When Louise asks Hyeon what kind of place this is, he replies that it is a dungeon's interior secret shop. It is a secret place that not even most Azra players know about. It contains all sorts of rare items whilst also being a safe haven against monsters. Hyeon buys Louise a kid's meal as she was hungry. He decides to purchase items that will allow him to use the opponent's strength against them as it is a one against many situation. Once the preparation is done, they plan on leaving the dungeon at night. Before going to the entrance, he tells Louise about a plan and instructs her to remember it. On the way, Louise gets sad that Hyun won't be able to stay with her after this as after the patch is delivered, all the users will experience a five-year time skip to experience the main story. Before long, they reach the stairs that lead to the outside of the dungeon, but they are laid with traps, so they have to be careful. As they run on the stairs, the assassins throw bombs at them, causing Hyun to drop under 20% of his ep. Hyun tells Louise to get back to her senses and to jump on the foothold as it's a trigger that crumbles the stairs. Hyun and Louise run towards the entrance while dodging the assassins' attacks at the same time. During that, a special effect of an item called Ring of Executioner gets activated. The only reason for Hyun to go to the secret shop was to get this item. This item allows all the attacks within the melee range to be directed toward the user that is wearing the ring. Hyun also plays an arrow trap and plans to absorb all of those arrows using one second absorption to create a huge vision sword to slash all the assassins. When they got out, Hyun gets separated from Louise's body. After successfully escaping the dungeon, he tells Elise to go on without him as he is going to stop all of those assassins by himself. Please read the pinned comment about the next part.